Okay, so to start, I want to show you these, this set of ten numbers right here. Okay, here's a set of ten numbers. These values are the amounts of time that, in minutes, amount of time in minutes that certain ten students spent studying for a math test. Okay. So student number one studied 34 minutes, student number two studied 38, student number three studied 48 minutes, and so on. So there's a set of 10 numbers. You don't have these 10 numbers, I just want your attention up here for right now. Okay? Uh, so I collect, let's say we collected this data, all right? When you put out a survey and you get a response from people, you're collecting data, okay? And now we're going to talk about all of this data that we collected, all right? Um, one piece of information that a lot of times you will find when you're given a, a set of numbers is the mean. What do you think of when you hear the word mean? Or what does mean mean? Average. Average, right? And how do you find average? Add them together and divide by how many. Awesome. Add them all up and divide by how many there are, okay? So when you see the word mean, I think we all know mean means average, okay? Or roughly about the middle. Okay? If you look below there, there is something called a dot plot. Okay? Again, this doesn't need to go in your notes, but I'm just showing you the dot plot of this set of data. Can everybody see how the dot plot re is another way of showing those 10 numbers instead of listing them? Okay? Why are there two dots right here? Because there's two 38s. There's two 38s. Good job. There were two 38s, so that's why you saw two dots there. Okay, the biggest number was somewhere around 60, looks like that must be the 61 right there, okay? So the dot plot is just another way to display a set of numbers, okay? Uh, they tell us that the mean was 42. Now if I kind of draw a line roughly about where 42 would fall, I would say it's about right there. Does that look like it's a reasonable answer for the mean if you look at the dot plot? Why? Why are you shaking your heads yes? Why does that look like a reasonable spot for the mean? A lot of the dots are near the line. It's like right, like right there. A lot of the dots are close to that, but you definitely have some dots that are to the left, some to the left, some to the right. The mean's kind of like a balance, right? About the middle. Okay, it's the average. Okay, so you should see some that are above, some that are below. So 42 looks like a reasonable answer for the mean. We didn't actually do the math to figure it out, but 42 looks like a a reasonable response for the mean. Okay, any questions on mean? Okay, then, here is the next word that, I'm, that I want to get through to you. Standard deviation. Sounds familiar. Sounds familiar, anybody? A lot of people said, no, we haven't really done standard deviation before, which is totally fine. Okay? Standard deviation is something we're going to become familiar with here uh, these next few weeks. Okay? If you deviate from your normal schedule, what does that mean? Change. Change, right? You don't do kind of what's expected. You, you, you know, go off want, the beaten track. Go off the beaten track. Awesome. Very good. Okay. Uh, so it's, you're deviating. You're changing a little bit. In math or in statistics, the standard deviation, I might call the average deviation, or the average amount that each data point is away from the mean. So the average of how far you are from the middle. Okay, that'd be a very non-mathematical way to describe standard deviation. It's on average, how far is every data point away from the mean? Does that make some sense? So if, make sure it makes sense, if 42 was my mean and I had a bunch of data points really close to it. Would I have a big standard deviation or a small standard deviation? Small. Small, because all of the data points are really pretty close to the mean. Okay? Where, if my mean was 42, but my dot plot, if my dot plot looked like that, that would have a large standard deviation because we have a lot of values that are a long ways away from the mean. So a standard deviation is simply the average of how far everything is away from the mean. If everything's really clumped together, you'll have a small standard deviation. If everything's really spread out, I'd have a large standard deviation. Okay? 
if I go out and play 18 holes of golf and I shoot 84, 85, 86, my small. average is 85 and I'd have a pretty small standard deviation. If I go out and shoot 75, 85, 95, my average is still 85, but I have a much larger standard deviation. It basically means I'm not as consistent, right? Okay? The data is more spread out. Okay. Here's the formula for standard deviation. You don't need to know this. Okay? You don't even know this, but I wanted to put it up there just for uh, need a reference. If you ever see X bar, that's the mean. X represents each number, and N is the number of numbers. This little sideways M is a summation notation, means to add up all the values. Okay? So if I were going to calculate the standard deviation by hand, I would start with 34. I'd go 34 minus 42, 42 is the mean, 34 minus 42 squared. Then 38 minus 42 squared. Then 48 minus 42 squared. And then I'd add up all those answers. This means to add up all of these answers. So I'd add up all those answers, divide it by n minus 1, and then square root that to get the standard deviation. Okay? Again, you will use technology to help you find standard deviation. I will not force you to do it by hand. You do not need to know that formula. Okay? But that's, there it is in case you're interested as to how it's actually done. Okay? Any questions on standard deviation? All right. To make sure you have a good understanding of it, let me ask you this. This top dot plot right here was the dot plot you saw on the previous page. It has a standard deviation of 8.77. They did the math for us. That has a standard deviation of 8.77. The mean is 42. Look at this dot plot, the one right below it, data set A. Would you say that data set A has a standard deviation more or less than 8.77 and why? More, more because they're more spread out. More because they're more spread out. How about data set B? It's less. Less, less because more everything's closer to the mean, right? Yeah. And data set C? More. more. Probably a little bit more. It might be close, but I'd still say probably a little bit more because it does look a little bit more spread out. So do we feel pretty good about that? Mm -hmm. Okay. Awesome. Then the other thing I want to review before we do a little bit of work ourselves is to talk about the different ways we can describe the shapes of these distributions. There are two ways to describe these shapes. One is symmetric and one is skewed. Okay. One is symmetric and one is skewed. And I drew a couple of examples of each right here that you might want to put in your notes if it helps you. Okay? These two, I'm going to erase those lines for right now. These two dot plots would be examples of symmetric dot plots. When you think of the word symmetric, what do you think of? even, the same on either side. You could fold it in half and it would look the same on either side or it would match the other side. Okay? So these are both examples of symmetric dot plots. Okay? These down here are examples of skewed dot plots. On a skewed set of data, you're going to get a bunch of points, a bunch of data points to the left and then some to the right, or vice versa, a bunch of data points to the right and some to the left. It's like there's a t long tail on the end, you know. It's not like, you know, this one has tails on both ends. This one really just has a tail kind of on one end or a tail on the other. Like a lizard. Kind of like a lizard. There you go. Okay. Now, here's the nice thing about symmetric. Where do you think the means would be located on these symmetric dot plots? In the middle. In the middle. Okay. I would guess the mean for that is right about there. I would guess the mean for this is right about here. If you were to fold it on the mean, it would be the same on both sides. 
What about for skewed? And the bigger part. Right in the middle of the bigger part? No. I would probably not say there. I would probably say closer to there. More like a big V kind of? Because all of these numbers over here are going to skew the mean. It's going to pull the mean to the right. <clears throat> okay? I'll go back to golf. Let's say I score... 84, 85, 86, 85, 84, 83, 85, 86, 87, 88, 112, 113, 114. What did those last three scores do to my average? Yeah. Moved it up, right? Even though the majority of my scores were all 83, 84, 85, 86, the majority of my scores are about 85, but I had a couple way off to the right that really skewed my average. It really pulled my average up. Okay, so I had a bunch of values over here that skewed my average to the right. That would be an example of a skewed distribution. Or this one has this one is skewed left because the average would be pulled down a little bit by those values in the tail. Okay? So symmetric, equal on both sides, skewed, a bunch of data points to the right, and then a, a few off to the left, or vice versa. A bunch of data points to the left and then um, some data points kind of in the small tail to the right. So any questions on symmetric versus skew? That should be enough to kind of get us going on um, kind of these first, well really about all of this, uh, all of the examples that we're about ready to work on. So those of you watching the video, now you just work through the packet. We'll do it the rest of the class period today and then we'll finish it up in class tomorrow. Peace out, homies.